Okay, so hello and welcome to this, the next episode of my Flix, Hex Flixel vlog. Um, so, a bit of disaster struck last night. I had recorded an episode and then I went through and I was trying to edit things and I ended up overwriting my video. <laughs> so I didn't have any video to show. So this one I've already completed uh, everything that we need to make graphics and animation but I just commented it out, tried to get back to where I was before and uh, I'll make this one a bit quicker than before so let's get to it. So we're going to change this white square into uh, a character so let's do that. So um, as I said before um, I prefer using this program Pickle to make my um, uh, sprite animations but you can use anything you want, GIMP or even another program called Graphic Scale, which is quite good. I, I've used it in the past and uh, I uh, checked it out recently and it looks like they've made some updates to it that make it even better, so maybe check that out. Um, but uh, since I have Pickle, I'll be using Pickle. So um, basically, uh, here's my animation. Uh, I have eight frames of a walk cycle. Uh, I believe that's from one to eight of just a normal walk cycle and then um, I have an idle animation which I think of frames 9 and 10 uh, whoops, 9 and 10 which instead of being played at 15 frames per second we'll play at like 3 or we'll play at 2 frames per second and then uh, my final two frames 11 and 12 are for jumping uh, this is while she's jumping up and while she's falling after a jump and um, with Pickle, um, you can export and to a PNG sprite sheet. And uh, no matter what uh, software you're using, uh, PNG is, I think, the recommended format because it has um, transparency and also it uh, makes very clean uh, and small files. So once you export it, you'll get something like this. Um, um, my sprite here is actually a 16 by, or 18 by, wait, 16 by 18? Yeah, I think 16 wide, 18 tall uh, sprite sheet. Um, that's important to know, you're going to need to remember that. So it'll render out all your frames like this. And basically, um, uh, before, in previous versions of Flixel, in the AS3 version, you had to line them up like this and it would number 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, to I guess 0 to 11 in this case um, but with the with <laughs> Hacks Flixel um, you can do it in a grid like you know uh, 4 by 3 or something like that um, but I think just the thing to keep in mind is that if you have any like uh, empty frames they will still be numbered along with the others um, but uh, it shouldn't really be much of a, of a problem and plus, I think uh, storing in power of two sizes is actually um, better for memory for some reason. I'm not sure if that's the case with Flixel, Hex Flixel, but uh, maybe it is. I don't know. Okay, so um, yes, here we have our graphic. And what you'll want to do is take this file and uh, you'll put it in uh, your assets and images uh, folder here. And as you can see, uh, we have the princess ping there. So, how do we bring it in? So, you can already see <laughs> a lot of the code that I had before. So, where we had make graphic before, um, we're going to remove that. And we're going to use load graphic instead. And basically, load graphic, it'll give you an a chance to enter where your file is and then um, actually let's just retype it just so you can see it real quick so if we do load graphic it'll ask where our what file we want to put in there we'll open up quotes here and then we'll right click and we'll generate embed code and it'll put the information for the uh, file in right there and then next if it's animated we'll put true if it's reversed we'll put true and that's for when we're working with our facing later, 
it'll automatically generate the, right now our sprite is looking to the right, it'll automatically generate the left looking sprites. And then next we're going to put in the width and height of our, um, of our sprites. And as I said, it's a 16 by 18 uh, sprite. And we don't need to worry about unique and key for now, so we'll close it out. And there we go. So I think with just that alone, if we run it, we should get our image showing. Looking like this. See, already um, the image is showing inside. But as you can see, it's not uh, animating, it's not turning, and uh, uh, it looks kind of weird. <laughs> so uh, let's get to that. So first, uh, how do we make animations? So let's come down to here and since this is a flick sprite um, it has an animation property and this animation uh, you just do animation and then you're gonna add an animation. First you'll put in the name and then next we're gonna put in this array of uh, the frames uh, of the animation we want. So if you remember we have our walk in eight frames so that's these eight one two three four five six seven eight but if you remember it starts with zero so that'll be zero through seven uh, so we just put in zero up to seven and then here is our frame rate and uh, if you remember uh, here I was running it at 15 frames per second and then uh, last is ooh, what is last <laughs> Last is whether it's looped, which this is, which is true. Okay, and um, while we are at it, let's add our other animations. We have an idle animation, which for frames, I guess, 9 and 10 in the other one, but 8 and 9 here. We have our jump and our fall. And since these are just single frames, I don't think I needed to uh, add a frame rate or the uh, looped. So I just put the, the frame for those. All right, so when do we use these animations? So basically, um, when we want to move left and right, when we're pushing our um, you know left and right keys, that's when we want to use our animations. In, to do an animation, or to run an animation, or play <laughs> an animation, I should say, uh, you'll just use the name that we uh, made up here. And be careful, these are case sensitive, so if you have a capital W here, it will not work. And if you notice above here, we have the facing attribute. Um, uh, the facing is also part of the flick sprite, so. Um, Basically, we'll just do facing, and then that's part of uh, the flix object, and we'll put flix object dot left. And don't forget, uh, when you type this in, you're going to have to import it, and that's as easy as after you type flix object, you'll do Control Shift One, and it will um, automatically import that for you. So for our left, we want the facing to be left. For right, we want the facing to be right. And if you notice, um, we have a way for it to start playing the animation, but we don't want it to continue walking when it's not moving. So what will we do? If uh, the x velocity of this flick sprite is equal to zero, it'll switch back to the idle, idle state. So I think with our current... Um, uh, code that we have, we should have walking and idling. So let's do a quick test, and there it goes. So she walks left, she turns, walks right, but when she jumps, she still just kind of stands there. And she can collect coins still and everything like that. So uh, let's edit the jump. So next, um, that's as easy as the other things, except instead of thinking about our x, we are going to worry, or use our y velocity. So we'll put in this uh, extra if statement, 
that if the velocity y is less than 0, that is negative, and since 0 is in the top left corner, uh, that'll be going up, so it'll switch to the jump animation. And then if the velocity is greater, which is down, it'll play the fall. So as easy as that. Okay, so uh, we'll just take a quick look at that, why don't we? And also I should add, um, you'll want to put this at the end so that it sort of uh, takes precedent over um, the other animations. Um, so see as she falls, she takes that, and then as she jumps, she kind of looks up. Jump, fall, jump, fall. Okay, so actually that's pretty much all there is to animation. But there's just one last little tweak I want to do. And this is more of a style thing. Um, that uh, I think makes your games look a little bit better. Um, and that is our, and also this is useful for adjusting the hitboxes. So right now um, she has an image that's 16 wide and 18 tall. So what we'll want to do is like say if there's a wall here, she would kind of hit it but like not really touch the wall because the image is a little bit bigger than where the pixels are. So let's look at changing the hitbox. So, so when you load a graphic, it automatically sets the hitbox to the size of uh, what you enter in here, which is the size of the image. But if you, after you load the graphic, if you change the width and the height, um, it will change the hitbox without changing the graphic. So um, we're going to go with a width of 8 and a height of 14. Um, this will, um, this width will, I think, cut into her graphic a little bit, but it kind of adds a little bit of, uh, I would say, 3D-ness uh, when she's like touching against a wall or something. And then uh, after we change it, uh, so when you change the box, it'll shrink into the top left corner as it usually does so we need to offset it with a new flix point um, moving it five pixels to the right and one pixel down so basically the um, uh, we uh, putting it just one pixel down it will have the box kind of high which in essentially will make her feet stick into the ground a little bit more uh, and I kinda like that look uh, for it and then I believe one other thing you'll need to change is in our play state, um, we added the player. Um, so we recreated uh, the player, and then we, before, we just directly added uh, her below. But actually, what we'll want to do is add her at the end uh, so that she's on top of everything. So you'll want to you'll have to move this down if you want to get the same effect that I have here. So let's play that. And here we go. Now when she falls and yep, touches down, there she is. She's kind of, you know, on the ground. And already it kind of gives a uh, the illusion that maybe she's not, you know, standing right on the horizon. Now this is a horizon that maybe goes off into the distance some indeterminate amount. And, uh, yeah, it just makes it look, look a little bit more uh, real, more depth, more oop, and all that. So, that's it for this episode. Um, I think maybe uh, the second time through it went much quicker. Um, and I hope that I didn't really skip over anything that would be useful to know. Um, yeah. So, that's all for this episode. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to make some tile maps. Which, uh, might, I might have to split it up into different uh, episodes because there's a lot to cover in that arena. But um, I will see you then. Bye.